Hey guys, I am Nitij and today we are going to transform how facts or frequently asked questions work by building an AI powered fact page that answers specific questions about our application or organization. So traditionally, the role of a fact page is to provide a set of questions and answers which are supposed to be commonly asked by the users for any application or for any organization. But with the recent advent of artificial intelligence models and chatbots, we can now add features such as adding inputs for custom and random questions which any user can ask and as long as the question and its contents lie within the domain of the information which can be provided with respect to the organization or the application itself, the answer will be provided directly by the AI model to the user. So this is the demo of what we will be building and I have also added a card of the traditional way of adding frequently asked questions. Now this way of adding facts is still not going to go away because most of the times the users don't even know what questions to ask. So this basically provides a template for the users but still if they have any custom question in their mind then they can simply ask the question directly. So for example, if the user wants to ask about the refund policy, then they can simply say, tell me about the refund policy and then click on submit. Now the AI is going to look into the company's details about what is the current refund policy is based on that information. It simply gives an answer. Now what will happen if the question is outside of the domain? of the applications or organizations information so let's say i ask a question i want to buy shoes online and now let's press submit this time the answer is i'm sorry but purchasing shoes online is not within the scope of our services however if you have any questions or require assistance related to our software solutions i would be happy to help this simply means that the ai model is only going to answer the questions related to the services which this organization or application provides if the question is not relevant then the response is going to be something like this now let's see how we can add this ai powered fact page or fact input into our own application so I will be using the OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo AI model because it is very fast and very cheap. You are free to explore other viable options which are available out there. They could be proprietary or open source or maybe your own model hosted on your own server. Whatever the case may be, the usage is going to be similar where we just provide a set of prompt inputs and then the LLM is going to work on those prompt inputs to provide us the response. Alright, so this is Visual Studio Code and the first thing I will do here is to add two folders. The first one is going to be for our React client and the second one is going to be for our Node.js backend server. I am going to open up a terminal to create a new React app. So first let's cd into the client folder. So cd client and then npx create React app and then AIFAC. Now let's open up another terminal to cd into this server folder and then let's initialize a new node application so npm init with the flag y to say yes to everything. So now in this server folder I will first create a new file with the name server.js. Let's first start to implement our server first while the create react app is setting up our frontend application. So for server we need to first install a few dependencies which are going to be npm install and then express for the application course for cross origin resource sharing and open ai to be able to make the open ai model requests so in server.js first i will fetch the dependency of express and then i will create a new express app by calling app equals to new express now let's fetch other dependencies as well like for course and for open ai this backend app is going to be running on localhost port 3001 let's use the course middleware so that our react frontend will be able to call the apis exposed in our node.js backend all right next i am going to add the endpoint which is going to be api and then fac and now this is going to call a callback function with the arguments of request and response 
so before i do anything else let me just list out what we will be doing over here first we will be reading the app details from a file which we will be using in the prompt that we will provide to the ai model then we will call the ai api model and then we will simply return the ai's response now instead of hard coding the companies or applications information i'm just going to create a new folder in the server folder with the name company and i will then create a new file with the name features.txt now this text file is going to contain all of the company's details from which the ai model is going to answer the questions so i'm just going to paste fictional company information which is the cloud net solutions okay so first we will read the details from the file so for that we are going to require the fs module so let's import that first so const fs equals to require fs now to read the file we just need to write fs dot read file and then we need to provide the path which is the company and then features dot txt then we need to provide the encoding type which is utf8 and then we need to provide the callback function so async and then first the error and then the data this is going to be an arrow function so first let's handle any errors which we may encounter while reading the file so if there will be any error then the message will be logged to the backend console and next we need to call the ai model and then return the response so when this endpoint will be called then we have to fetch the question text from the request parameter so that can be done by simply calling request.query.question parameter value now we can only move forward if the question is a valid value so if question and question.length if that's the case then we can call the ai models api first let's create a const for our open ai's api key that we will be using for the api requests now this is a secret so instead of hard coding it like i'm doing over here for the sake of this video you can either save it in the devops pipelines environment variable or you can also use a dedicated key manager now let's initialize open ai by providing this api key as an argument next the model that we will be using which is the gpt 3.5 turbo next i will create the empty array for the prompt the first prompt line that i'm going to push into this array is going to be this one so this is for the ai's system role so you are a company's support specialist available to answer any question only answer from the following um, hold on from the following company details and nothing else and the company details are going to be provided with this data argument let's add one more line over here and that is to handle any um, question which is not matching the um, company's information or the app's information so politely decline if the question does not match the following which is the um, company's data and then finally we can simply push to the prompt the data next we need to add the messages array for the system and the user role so for the system role we are providing the prompt and for the users role we will be providing the question it simply means that these are the systems instructions and this is what the user is asking now to call the ai model we just need to um, call the open ai's chat completion function this can be done by calling chat.completions.create and by providing an options object with the model value and also the messages array now we are going to get the response so when we will get it then we are just going to return it in the form of json so const a response equals to completion dot choices arrays first item dot message dot content and we can simply return the json so response dot json hold on response dot json and then ai response now if no question has been provided then we can simply return another message so response.json and then messages or message no question provided all right let's move this comment over here and the only thing which is left for us to do is to um, call app.listen so that our node.js backend can start to listen on port 3001 
for this api's requests so i'm just going to write app dot listen the port number and the callback function is going to print the message server running on port this number okay so i think our node.js backend is now finished so let's first test it before we can move on to the um, react frontend part so for that i will simply call node and then server it says server running on port 3001 now to test our node backends api i'm just going to use postman to send the get request for the query parameter i'm just going to write question and then for the value i'm just going to write the question so how do i get a refund all right now click on send so we have a response which says to initiate a refund please ensure that you are within the terms of our cancellation policy and yeah i think the backend api is working now it's time to implement our react frontend all right so let's close this terminal first and then um, open up the app.js file to make changes to our app component in our react frontend now i'm going to remove this header from over here and let's also remove this logo import i will be creating a new component with the name question card which is going to contain the input for our ai driven fact so let's do that first let's add a bunch of state variables the first one that we are going to need is for the question input so question and then set question equals to use state hold on use state and with the default value similar to this we will need the response state as well so response state variable is going to be this one now let's also add the import statement for use state so the input form for our ai driven fact is pretty straightforward we will be adding a text input with a button when the button will be clicked then a get request will be created and the backend api will be called so i'm just going to add the form over here here is our input which is going to accept the question its value is the question state variable and the on change event is simply setting the set question function with the inputs value and here is the button below the form we are simply showing the response if the response is available then it will be displayed before our form now the forms on submit handler is handle submit so let's create the handle submit function so const handle submit equals to an async arrow function with the event argument first let's call event dot prevent default because this is the on submit handler of form now to fetch the response i'm just going to write const response equals to await we will be using the fetch api so fetch and then this is going to be a template string because we are going to use the question in this template string so http and then local host and the port number is 3001 for our node backend and this is our api endpoint api and then fact now let's provide the question as the query parameter so question equals to now let's provide the question value and we will be using the encode uri component function to make sure that the question text is properly encoded when we are using it as a query parameter so we just need to provide question as an argument over here so question and then hold on in the next line we are just going to call uh, response.json to get the data so const data equals to response.json now when we have the data then we can simply set the response state variable by um, fetching the value of data dot ai response because remember um, we were returning the ai's response um, in the ai response property this one the last thing that we need to do is to use the question card component and return it from the app component so question card and then let's also style this parent div as well so um, you know what what i will be doing is let's first set the height to screen's height and then let's set the width as full and then let's also center align our questions card let's now save it and then open up the terminal to run our react app so cd ai fact and then run npm and then start so this is how the app is looking but our card is still not vertically center aligned so let's see why that is not the case 
okay i think i also need to add flex over here so these are all the tailwind classes which i'm using and i have already installed tailwind in the background so this is how our ai driven fact page is looking now let's simply start by saying hello to our ai model click on submit so there seems to be some error and let's find out what this is about so in this code i have made two mistakes first one is instead of http i have added https out of habit and the second one is we need to write the await keyword over here because this is also going to return a promise now let's save okay now let's try again for hello click submit it says hello how can i assist you with cloudnet solutions software services today so let's open up the company's feature.txt file to ask something which is already over here so i'm going to ask about the 24 7 support okay so tell me about hold on tell me about your customer support metrics press submit it says at cloudnet solutions we take great pride in our customer support metrics our commitment to excellence is reflected in a and the information which should be already in the features.txt file now let's ask something irrelevant like what color is my shirt it says i'm here to assist with inquiries related to cloudnet solutions software services and policies if you have any questions then please feel free to ask it means that our ai driven fact is simply refusing to answer any irrelevant questions and is only answering from the content that we have provided within the prompt and that is how my friends you build a smart ai powered frequently asked questions page which is tailor-made for providing specific information about your application or your organization so if you liked this tutorial and you think it helped you then please consider subscribing to this channel it's a great way to support me and also to stay updated with more such content thank you for watching and happy coding